Hi, this is Rachel with the Dotting Center, and this is part three of the Taurus Mandala tutorial series. In this video, I'm going to show you the final few rows, some decorative corner flourishes, and top dots. This video tutorial corresponds with a PDF pattern that's available for instant download at the Dotting Center on Etsy. The link is included in the notes below, so if you're anything like me and cannot wait another second to get started on this project, go ahead and download it, print it on some pretty cardstock, and let's get dotting. Okay, so these are the curvy drop shapes. They're kind of like swoosh shapes. So it's basically the same thing. Um, drop a dot with a rod and then pull it out with a stylus tool. And the trick here is just to keep that line close to the inside edge of that center drop shape. And um, it adds a really cool flourish. So this is part three, and if you guys have been following me along, thank you, I appreciate it. I hope you're enjoying it, and if you are, leave me a comment, let me know what you think. Um, also, like the video and subscribe, because I'm gonna make more videos like this, and I'd like you to join me. Okay, so now I'm using the very tiniest pointed silicone tool for those tiny white dots surrounding that drop shape. You can see here, you can just get a lot of dots that are all kind of uniform. And now here's the contrast. Here's using a stylus tool. See how you can walk the dots and they become smaller as you go. So just filling in this shape right here, I decided to do two little swooshes on either side of that center dot pattern. Okay, so here it is at actual speed and zoomed in so that you can see how much time I spend right here. You apply the most paint right at the top of the swoosh and then you leave your stylus tip on the canvas so that you can actually feel and hear the tip of the stylus along the canvas as it's drawn out. So now I added a little bit more yellow and made just a little bit larger swoosh on that outside section. So now comes a really cute flourish. This is a kind of a three swooshed flourish. I gotta come up with a name for these things, but yeah, it's just basically one swoosh, two swoosh, and then one in the middle. And that just fills that strange little pointy shape on either side with a nice little decorative element. I don't know, leave a note in the comments. Let me know, what should that be called? The triple swoosh? Hmm. So one of the things I like to do when I go from one petal or row to another petal or row is I look for ways to add contrast, both with color and in size and shape of the dots. So I just went from a petal that was really decorative, used tiny, delicate yellow dots, yellow and white dots, and I went into a petal that is now beginning with a huge blue dot. And I think the contrast adds a lot of interest. So for each of these rows, I'm just adding a drop of white to the ultramarine blue to um, have a gradient effect going from dark blue to light blue on the edges. So 
So now I'm going to fill that really thin triangular space with cerulean blue to complete that circle shape that I made with the compass. And now the plan is just to add white and extend the cerulean blue out from the center using kind of a wave pattern, which you'll see here. So here I added a touch of emerald green to the cerulean blue so I can get a nice transition from one color to the next. Now if you're using the printed PDF pattern, you'll notice that this section isn't included. This, is, this goes beyond the printable margins of the paper size. So everything from here is what you would use on a 12 inch canvas. Um, but yeah, it looks like you have completed your PDF pattern. So awesome. Yeah. And if you completed it, I want to see it tag me. Okay. So now I'm just going to add a couple of standard rows of dots towards the edge just moving from blue into green. I want to have green corners somehow to tie in some of the green from the rest of the painting. Wait for it and boom. Woke you up there, didn't I? All right, so now I'm going to go into the corner and I'm actually going to work from the corner in. So I'm going to make a little flourish shape using one huge drop and then two little swooshes on the side and then add swooshes all the way down. It makes kind of like a little plant shape. Added a dot in the center and now I'm going to walk the dots all around the edges. Okay, so with those corner flourishes added, the entire canvas is now covered in dots. So this is where we're at right now. And we'll let it dry 100% and add the top dots next. So for the drop shapes, you can choose to either have just a singular dot in the larger section of the drop or you can extend it out and have smaller sized dots on top. So one of the reasons why I made the practice PDF pattern that goes along with this painting is so that you can find what tools you like um, when making shapes like this. You might prefer a brush or you might prefer um, to not use silicone tools. Whatever works best for you, do that. This is also an opportunity to come in and see any blank spaces that could be a nice place to add teeny tiny tiny dots. I like to do this with contrasting colors because um, it gives an interesting effect from far away. Um, I think it adds a lot to the piece.
adding a white top swoosh. If you don't like one of the colors that you use, just use a silicone tool and wipe it off. Add lines with your flat silicone tools. This is the medium size set. Not sure which color to use? Try them both and then wipe the one off that you don't like using your silicone tool. So because I use stencils for pretty much every painting that I do, I use chalk lines. And one of the most asked questions that I get is how do you remove the chalk lines once your painting is dry? And I feel your pain. I know what it's like to use a chalk pencil that doesn't wipe off easily. But I finally found one that is very nice. It wipes off very easy with water, my towel, or in this case, my kid's sock. It was clean, but yeah, I offer them in my Etsy shop. So if you want an awesome chalk pencil, please visit me there and I will hook you up. So this was fun. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you liked it, like literally by clicking that little like button. But also I hope you learned some things about dotting and maybe got inspired for your next project. So is there anything you'd like me to cover in future videos? If so, let me know in the comments below. This video was made because of suggestions from my Facebook and Instagram followers. And if you're into my videos, consider buying yourself some dotting supplies from the Dotting Center. That support from my customers allows me to make videos like this and it's very much appreciated. Also, if you haven't subscribed by now, you probably should. My videos will definitely be getting better now that I know about sound effects, and uh, so you can look forward to that. Yay! Thanks for watching, guys. Until next time.